Hello everyone and welcome back to Pride of Anglia here with Norwich City. It's our seventh season as a manager and our first full one in charge of Norwich, hopefully anyway. And we have of course finally made it to the promised land of the Premier League after an incredible rescue job of a Norwich season we inherited last year. Can we keep it going in the big time or will Norwich be Norwich? We've got a decent squad for sure, but with some players departing, especially in midfield, we need quality improvements to ensure we can break the cycle of Norwich being continually relegated. 40 million is good, but it won't stretch that far, so we need to be sensible and prioritise. Peterborough had a cracking season last year and actually made the championship playoffs, so let's destroy them. Louis Sibley feels like a perfect backup for Tyrick Backinson and is snapped up for 5.5 million. He's left footed, well rounded, strong technicals, a good first piece of business. And then we also pinch their top scorer as we correct an AI mistake. Adam Eder, channel legend, rejoins for £5 million. Along with McCrory and Ganago, we should be set for strikers. Midfield is obviously the priority as we're losing Alde Fuentes. I really, really push to sign Lewis Ferguson as our new starter there, but he chooses to go and sit on Fulham's bench instead. I'd like some more quality on the left, so we sign Takumi Minamino on a free from Leon. Very reasonable wage too. He's 32, but still has a lot to offer I think and like all players I tend to go for he's well rounded. Goalkeeper is something which could be improved but it's not a priority this year but we sweep for Daniel and Yoko for £700,000 compensation from Chelsea. He's got some great attributes for a 17 year old and is assessed as five star potential. Transfer windows with money are certainly an unusual feeling less pressure on the free transfers. I do release a lot of plays from the youth squads though. Ramal Palmer is the only senior departure after refusing to sign a new deal. And of course the same applies to Fuentes whose move to Verona is confirmed after he rejected our offer. Extremely short sighted from him and I'm not sure what more the fans think we could have done. But we need a replacement and with Ferguson's incredibly frustrating rejection, the easiest thing to do is to sign last year's loanee Sean Longstaff on a permanent deal for 1.9 million. His wage is ridiculous but it was even worse at one point. Crucially, he's happy only being a squad player, which literally no other midfielder was prepared to go for. Like Pedro Palagio, for example, who, after careful consideration, I signed from Portimonese for 8.5 million. Did I mention I like well-rounded players? He ticks the boxes, reasonable fee, wage, 27, already speaks English as Leeds had him previously, I like it. The other option we could have gone for, which I will now be cancelling, is Julian Masson from Brest, more expensive all round. Might be a mistake, we'll see. Nico Serrano's loan has come to an end, so we need a replacement on the right-hand side, and I go for Emmanuel Vignato from Fuentes Steelers Verona for 3.6 million. His wages and squad status would indicate he thinks he'll be starting. David Brooks would disagree. We'll see who wins. Vignato's pretty good though. We still have 13 million to spend and a bit of wage budget, but the main business is done unless we sell anyone. Let's see how the media are assessing us and... 19th, okay, could technically be worse I suppose. Avoiding relegation is the main aim of course. Ken Abo is well down the striking pecking order and needs games, so departs on loan to Blackburn for the season. And James Black is by far our best youth academy prospect, like he's actually really good, but he needs to play to develop, so we loan him to Preston. Think he'll definitely be a part of the squad next year though, and he's broken his ankle. Thanks so much game. I tried to sell Josh Knight as he isn't Premier League level but the best we can get is a full wage playing loan to Preston as well. Maybe don't injure him like the other guy, please. We signed Dale Fry from Middlesbrough as a replacement. Very well rounded, obviously. Not sure how well Wilmot will do at this level and Ferguson still wants to leave so worth signing. I think we're done now though. As we head towards the start of the season, Norwich's failed old manager pipes up with some utterly embarrassing nonsense. And we lose Steve Weaver, our head of youth development to Leeds, but I sign Gavin Ream from Cardiff to replace him. But then it's time for the first game of the season. Brentford are first, which seems winnable. My initial starting lineup is going to be what it was last season, save for Palagio coming into the space in midfield. He's injured for this one though, as well as Captain Backington, so Sibley and Longstaff start and we make a bright start with an early Woodburn effort before being handed a big boost as Alex Crowell is given a straight red card. And we capitalise in the second half as Papetti heads home from a corner, and even better, McCrory capitalises on a series of defensive errors to calmly open his account for the season. And that's it. No real danger, for we the look season. really good. It won't always be for like the that, but a perfect start. For After the, the match, I am baffled to find that Brentford are managed by Jurgen Klopp now. 
FM folks. The final season ticket tally is confirmed with 19,332, which is a lot more than when we were at Braintree. And there was never much resolution on a potential takeover last year, but it is apparently still a possibility. And I recall James Black from Preston to ensure he gets better treatment for his lengthy injury. Our opening run of fixtures is actually quite kind, and we have Burnley up next, and it's a decent point. We have Wolves in the League Cup, and it really isn't a priority. A side as rotated as possible loses 2-1. Meh. We end our first month of games with Leeds, and we have a great early effort from Palagio, which hits the post, and then it proceeds to turn into the David Brooks show. His skill is silky, and a fine move sees him curl the ball past Farinez to give us the lead. Walton's goal kick is then missed by the Leeds defence, and McCrory makes it 3-3 three three for him. It could be more, but Leeds barely have a sniff all day as we grab another excellent win. Look, we're third. I have no further transfer plans, but deadline day does bring news that Christos Solis has joined Manchester United and this nets us a 10 million sell-on fee. Not bad going. Overall, I think, a decent, sensible first Premier League window. McCrory's excellent start is rewarded with second place in Player of the Month and his first senior Scotland cap. Great rewards indeed. Can he score four in a row as we face Wolves? Nope, our first league defeat of the season. We played fairly well in the first half, but unfortunately there was a second. Spurs are then our first of the big sides, if you can really describe Spurs as that. And you really shouldn't, because frankly we dominate from start to finish. We have a couple of chances in the first half, but after the break we work it nicely, and once again Brooks is on hand to send it into the far corner and give us the lead. Son then gets a straight red card for an absurd challenge, and while we could extend our lead, we don't need to is we hold on for a fantastic win. Fortress Carrow Road in full effect. We're already a quarter of the way to safety after just five games. The fans must be so confused, especially as we then play Bournemouth and we then beat them. A dull first half before we race into a 3-0 lead in a matter of minutes, proceed to concede two before thankfully Vignato's first assist sees McCrory bag a brace to give us yet another win. I like exceeding expectations in this save, but this is getting silly now. I'm sure it will settle down. But it's been such a great start, I asked the board to improve some things, and they agree to at least improve the youth intake, which is nice. And then they offer me a new contract, which is also nice. They certainly seem impressed, as am I, with a £9,500 a week wage rise. No hesitation in extending, of course. Barring catastrophe, we're Norwich till the end now. But speaking of catastrophes, Sibley is now out for three months after, I guess, jumping too high? Not ideal. Now, as we're in the Premier League and there's fewer games, I think it's time to switch to two episodes per season, each covering six months, because I do want to finish this save before FM23. So let's play Crystal Palace. They won the playoffs last year and look keen on heading straight back down, which I'm going to boldly say I don't think we'll be doing as we win again thanks to a Papetti header. Embarrassing failure, Lee Bowie then decides to chirp up with some more inane nonsense. No one cares, Lee. After the international break, we face Brighton and I'm confident of another win, but then Brighton score from a corner thanks to some slack marking. We strike back though as Fignato finds McCrory, whose finish is excellent, but then Brighton score again thanks to some atrocious goalkeeping from Walton, and unfortunately Brighton have the vastly superior Dominic Livakovic in goal and he denies McCrory and Vignato to condemn us to our first home league defeat of the season and indeed the first home league defeat of our entire spell in charge. The amazing start wasn't lasting forever, was it? Indeed, we face Leicester next and quickly give away a penalty for literally nothing. Tielemann scores and it's all downhill from there as some shambolic defending allows them in twice in three minutes and while Backington pulls the goal back, they go on to grab a fourth. A reality check. Will top of the league Arsenal make it three in a row? Well, no, actually. Just as we seem to be settling to mid-table, we go and beat Arsenal with a late back in sin effort. We're essentially halfway to safety and it's October. I really don't know how long this will last, but hey, let's enjoy it. November kicks off with Jack Walton being ruled out for the month, which is great. I've moaned about him, but he's done okay, I guess. Although as well as we're doing, Papetti, Backington and Reed are the only true standouts in terms of ratings. Anyway, Fulham are next and it's a grudge match really as they have Paul Lambert in charge and of course signed Dominic Solanke from us after he demanded a move. And fair to say it's not gone as he planned. 
How sad. We take an early lead through an absolute pile driver from Longstaff and then Fulham immediately equalise with the most obviously scripted goal in FM history. Ugh, I hate this game sometimes. We proceed to dominate the rest of the match but as Ben Woodburn somehow misses this, we somehow can't find a way through. 1-1, our first real waste of the season. It's been a good start but this squad is not good enough to seriously challenge for anything yet. Ah oh well football manager folks. Manchester United are top of the table. We managed to beat Arsenal when they were top so who knows what will happen here. And well not very much is the answer. A pointless early highlight and then nothing at all until Backinson nearly scores late on. Nil nil. A very solid point though. We end the month with Aston Villa and well we look excellent from the start racing into a 2-0 lead and then we fully bin it off. Don't remember the last time this happened in the save. Vignato and Ferguson woeful. We're still in sixth place though so who can really complain? Literally everyone apparently. You know what squad player means right? It means you don't start games unless there's an injury or planned rotation. It doesn't mean regular starter does it? Very annoying. Anyway we could deal with a win against West Brom who are also somehow currently in a European spot following promotion alongside us last season. Due to some poor performances Fry comes in alongside Papetti and with Brooks out injured I move McCrory wide right with Ida up front as Vignato has been awful. And overall it's a day for defenders. West Brom hit the post and Fry is on hand to smash it away. Reed has a free kick in the second half which hits the bar with Norrington Davis scooping it off the goal line and West Brom come forwards again only for a certain goal to be stopped by Fry once again with an insane tackle. Nil nil and I really need to make sure I'm not too harsh on them. We're expected to be relegated so this is really quite good. Nevertheless we have dropped to ninth and haven't won in four so if we could beat Everton that would be great. Nope we get trashed again. This is the Norwich we know and love. I hope I don't have to reassess my earlier we're not going to get relegated prediction but at least it won't be too easy eh? Jacob Brown has barely played this season and wants to leave and we agree a 9.75 million deal with Blackburn in January. Not bad. What is bad is that the team we have to try and get back to winning ways against is Manchester City. I'm not holding out much hope and I... Uh, what? I think at this point I just need to accept I have no idea about anything to do with this game at all. I didn't even do a team meeting and their XG was better than ours. The defence was incredible, Walton made some vital saves, Ganago got a brace after barely getting on the bench all season. A real team performance, wow. I wish I'd recorded it live although we'd probably have lost. Still in a state of shock about what just happened, Callum Wilson sends an email advising of a golden generation in our next youth intake. You know, I'll believe anything at this point, Callum. And to really underline how good that performance was, we get three guys in the team of the week. Papetti wasn't actually one of them, but he's been so immense all season, I can sense the approaching interest from elsewhere, so tie him down to a lengthy new extension. December is of course the busiest month, and Watford are next. We're at home, they're way behind us, so it should be an easy three points, right? Two minutes in, Watford score. Ugh, but we get a corner and Papetti celebrates moving up a tax bracket with an equaliser. And then for a long time nothing happens until McCrory goes clear and sees his effort saved. His early goal flurry seems a while ago. We get a corner and drama, there's a handball and we've won a late penalty. Adam Eder steps up and scores. His first goal since rejoining and we steal it at the death. We shoot up to sixth with that, back to absurdity. I love it. But it surely won't continue against Liverpool, right? Yeah, no, we improved as we went on, but never really going to happen. Brighton are next, and that is a swift return to winning ways. 3-2, and McCrory nets a brace to end his barren spell. We're linked with the Villa job like some kind of Paul Lambert, but of course I'm not interested. We end the year and the episode with bottom of a league Crystal Palace. Thrilling. Nil nil. Ah well, the board go and increase the youth coaching budget, so not all bad. And really, bad is not a word you can use to describe our season at all. We end the year in 7th place, which would mean European football, which is insane given we were tipped for relegation. I don't know where we'll shake up, but I think we can feel safe at least. Feels like we've been overperforming, but we're 5th for XG and 3rd best in terms of XG against, so the stats would seem to back us up. But there we are, not bad at all, hopefully it'll continue next time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.